Good morning and welcome to the Guyana Extractive Sectors Transparency Week. We are off to a great start. My name is Kitty Sabaslai. I am the producer and one of the hosts of the conference. It is my great pleasure to welcome you back if you attended the opening ceremony. And if this is your first session today, welcome. We are very, very happy to have you participate in today's and this week long event of discussions and idea sharing and perspective sharing. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Per Francisco Paris. He is the regional director of Latin America and Caribbean at the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, also known as EITI. He's going to share his thoughts about why transparency matters. Francisco, over to you. Thank you very much. And thank you again for uh, allowing me to span a little bit on, on my initial remarks uh, through the video you show an hour ago. Um, so uh, I would like to introduce you more widely to the EITR, although I know many of you are very familiar with, with the EITI and the EITI standard, but uh, for uh, the benefits of everybody, let's, let's go through um, a more general presentation, which will be obviously uh, um, uh, interrupted by uh, any question, any clarification, any commentary we would like to share in this session. Uh, on the next slide, we will see um, why we're here? Why? Why? What is the problem we are trying to solve in with the with this uh, um, standard? Uh, and this is a fact that 3.5 billion people live in countries that are rich in oil, gas, and, and minerals. And this is according to World Bank. And um, we believe that uh, I think we all agree that good governance of of these uh, extractive resources of the revenues uh, that are obtained from those resources have a tremendous potential impact on uh, reducing poverty and boosting shared prosperity. On the next slide, we'll, we see that um, some, some statistics uh, to, to illustrate the point of why this is a, a, a resource rich countries are very, very, um, uh, have the potential to um, use the sector for for development is uh, in, in many countries, uh, eight out of uh, 10 of these top lists uh, by the World Bank, uh, countries that th the GDP have a strong reliance on uh, the extractive sector. And Guyana is listed there and, and you are starting to understand uh, the significance of, of the sector, which was already very important, but. Uh, with the, obviously with the, um, the discovery of the commercially um, uh, deposit that you, you have done in the recent year, this potential will be only multiplied probably spo exponentially. Next, please. Uh, just as I mentioned in my introductory video, um, I understand personally the tough decision that a country have to make when this is when the, when the set of circumstances that you have in front of you happen. Uh, this is the, these two pictures are uh, the kind of illustrate the kind of um, thought decision we, we as Venezuelan face 40, 50 years ago. Uh, the, we have to um, decide to allocate oil revenues to projects. These two projects are similar. There are two dams, one in the Guri region, which is not far from your borders, 250 kilometers, I guess, from your border in, uh, in, the, in the east part of Venezuela. And this is an area that as, as you have this wonderful Kaiti tour uh, falls, we have many. So it's very easy to um, generate electricity. So that uh, dam was, uh, a, a very efficient way to use the money and um, generate 10 megawatts. 
The one on the right is on the Andes in the mountains. You can see the mountains there. Uh, technically, it's very difficult to build a dam in the mountain because of the sediment. And we decided to build it. And it costs the same as the other one, and it only generates a fraction of the power. Um, those are the decisions. Um, you, um, if you want more, you can read my dissertation thesis, but uh, and, and for another day. Uh, this is, uh, but illustrate that you can get it right and you can get it extremely wrong. Very inefficient use of your money. The EITI 18 years ago um, reflect on this. Uh, and at that time, the, the label um, attached to this kind of problems for development for uh, was um, uh, labeled the resource curse. And it still is, is, um, it, 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 it is a very accurate way to say it. We, uh, 18 years ago, agree that the prudent use of these natural resources are the best way, or one of the best way to ensure sustainable development. And this potential uh, is there for tackling the big problem in development, which is our poverty and others. The same, in the same uh, declaration, it was totally recognized from the outset of the EITI that the solutions are the domain of sovereign governments. Uh, this is not a standard to dictate solutions, to dictate policy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, this is in the domain of the, the country and obviously the government to lead that. But at the same time, we recognize, we all recognized that public debate and informed evidence-based debate and decision-making uh, is the best way to address and get the to realistic option for sustainable development for each country. In the next slide, you will see that this, um, why this is not a panacea, because it's the global and local context in each country evolve all the time. Uh, we are now facing uh, this in now 2021, post pandemic or transition into a more uh, less affected by the pandemic world. We are facing all of these um, factors. I'll reduce demand for oil uh, because of the, the energy transition is evidently in front of our eyes and decision makers now. But at the same time, this energy transition will imply uh, the, uh, demand for strategic minerals. You need lithium for batteries, you need cobalt, you need copper for, for you need a steel to, to build the, the windmills. Um, but we, the, the fact that we are going to do this transition and some country will gain from this, some country will lose uh, revenues, uh, it, it means that there, we are gonna face an era of budget under strain. Now, obviously, um, make worse by the need to uh, fight the pandemic, but also to re rebuild economic growth uh, because of the terrible 18 months we, the world have faced uh, since uh, the beginning of last year. But at the same time, part of the same uh, problematic around climate change is the diversification, the, the no longer uh, importance of, of the coal in the energy mix. So this is all changing. At the same time in Guyana, the reality as it is now is that you have become a major oil producer in the middle of all of this scenario, in the middle of, of, of an oil sector that everybody is forecasting that will um, have to produce less, that will leave reservoirs in the ground uh, on exploited probably. And, and certainly this is a reality, as I mentioned, for my, my own uh, country of origin, Venezuela. 
Uh, in the next slide, I share just a little bit of history of the EITI. So basically, as I said, 20 years, 18 years ago, we started to, um, uh, to discuss this problem, resource course and uh, the transparent deals that companies enter with governments. And that led to the creation of the EITI in 2002, in 2003, the principle, as I mentioned, I highlighted three of them. And then we established uh, a, a more like an architecture and an organic form to implement the standard. And um, we started by, uh, oh, it was established an international board with an international secretariat in Oslo to support the worldwide um, governance structure and, and and implementation of, of the standard. In 2013, 2016, and 2019, the standard has been uh, agreed all the time and updated with new additions, with modification, all responding to lessons learned, or responding to um, best practice that are accumulated and are codified in each of these uh, moments. Next, please. And we are, that's what we have now. We have a standard that have evolved through all of this year, through all of these processes, and uh, are con containing what we call this EITI standard, which is obviously the codification, the procedures, the guidance on all of this that I, I have been mentioned. Um, I don't know if we can pause here, if there are any questions so far, or should I name? talk more about the standard itself. Yeah, let's take a quick break here, Mr. Paris, and let's see if the audience has any questions. Please enter your questions in the Q&A so we can see your questions coming in. And we are going to periodically stop. So please go ahead and ask any question that comes to your mind. We would like to uh, answer them probably as soon as we can, if not within a few minutes. And right now, I don't see any questions pertaining to the presentation just yet, but I did want to give a shout out to everybody so that you can go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A and we will get to it. Uh, and there is actually, um, uh, there is a comment in the question, uh, a Q&A, governance and structure, we see badly contracts, policies, agreements, other issue, I have technology and future work. This is a comment from one of our participants, some of the issues that people run into when it comes to transparency. So for now, I think we can keep on going, Mr. Paris. And as we get some more questions, I'll be happy to bring them up and we can discuss them. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, so um, that's the standard. Um, the standard has been implemented in 50 countries. You can keep <laughs> uh, pressing, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, in uh, 55 countries. Um, if actually in the next slide, you can see all of them. Um, obviously, Guyana being one uh, of, of the, the processes in, in Latin America. In Latin America, we have 11 EITI processes from the Caribbean, uh, your, your neighbors and friends, three and Tobago and Suriname and to Peru, going up to Mexico and down to Argentina. Let me then take a little bit of a moment to explain what we mean by by the global standard, the ITI standard. And you, many of you have seen uh, this uh, representation before, but basically what it, it, it tries to convey is that uh, transparency is needed through the so-called value change. It's no more complicated than the sequence of uh, options and procedures Etc. that need to happen for these natural resources you have here on, on the left, uh, on the ground in the Caribbean coast, in the Liza fields and, and the others, 
to be converted to in the other side of this diagram in public benefit in what we already have uh, mentioned uh, as a sustainable development. For all of this to happen, you need to get countries and, and societies need to get many things right. We need to get the contracts and the licenses uh, in the best balance between um, boosting investment and, and, and know-how technology, and at the same time, rewarding the owners of these resources, which are the citizens. Uh, then you need to deal with production uh, and production uh, is, is, is can be as complex uh, and, and it, it requires a, a series of, of, of operations and measurement that also need to be transparent. So the citizens and every decision maker knows exactly what's being extracted and how it's being uh, produced. Then you have the revenue collection component, which was historically the focus of the EITI in that initial conversation I referred to when uh, civil society in uh, at the beginning of, of this century was asking uh, government and company to, to be more transparent about, about the flows of money from, from operators and companies to the recipients of this, the governments in each of the country. Then another decision that countries face and are not easy in Latin America is a, is a good example of a different approach to this, is how to distribute this revenue. Should we uh, use it as a main source of the national budget or should we transfer to the region, the producing regions like in, in, in Peru, in Peru uh, around 50%, so half of the revenues are channeled to the regions directly. Uh, in Colombia, there is a similar system, but it's, it's more complex in the way that in the formulas to make the distribution happen uh, are, are conducted. And, and in other countries, it's very centralized. Chile is not a EITI, EITI implementing country, but we, we follow the Chilean extractive sector and is is very centralized, very, very centralized. Central government re receive all the royalties and, and are spent in via or through the national budget. And then there is the last thing also is not only how revenues are going to different government units, but also how is it spent in the regions, in the community via what we call a social expenditure and but also the social impact and contribution that the operation has. All of these things are codified in the standard. Next slide, please. The standard allows two things. Allows to the disclosure of data per this agreed practice that are very detailed, detailed codified in the standard, as you can see on the requirement 4, 4.1, this is how the taxes that should be included. This is the way we should do it. Uh, we, we need to take into account the materiality of this revenue. All of these are very, very well codified already and proven through all of these years. But at the same time, the standard has the rules and procedures uh, in a flexible manner that allows countries to shed light on particular issues. And um, the example I'm using here is because I, I, I know that we are going also to talk tomorrow more about this uh, and is to shed light on how the trading of the, uh, of, of the oil that uh, is, is belongs to the state as part of this um, production sharing contracts, uh, which is one of the typical contractual uh, ways to, to govern these uh, operations. Next, please. Very important to the EITI standard is not only this codification of requirement by requirement, not only the opportunity to dig and shed light, as I 
set on particular issues of interest. A core component feature of the EITI standard is this tripartite, this triangle. This, uh, we used to have a chair that referred to the, as the magic triangle, which is to bring to a table, to bring to a platform, to bring to a conversation, government, investor, companies, and civil society. This is key component of this standard. It's not only uh, as many other standard in, for, for this industry or for many other that they are very well codified what is meant to be the best practice in, in, in transparent disclosure of data. But here, a key addition is that it, for the EITI, for this to be called a EITI procedure, have to take into consideration this governance, this monitoring structure, uh, we, we call it the tripartite or multi-stakeholder group, which is uh, the, the word we sometimes, we, uh, the term we sometimes use, um, or MSG, but in the case of Guyana, you know that is your um, uh, GY, EITI um, National Commission. On that note, Mr. Paris, let's take some questions. There are some questions about civic involvement. So the first question for you is, what sanctions can EITI impose on a country such as Guyana do not follow transparency practices in releasing information on oil and gas in Guyana? What should media and civic groups do if their re requests for information are not honored? Thank you. Um, we believe that this is a, a, a collaborative, proactive um, endeavor that we all are embarking on. To uphold the, this tripartite spirit, it has to be done that way. So it's not about, a, uh, it, it's, it's not a standard meant to have a sanction or punishment. It have procedures and it have certainly <laughs> stick and carrots. And we have a, a procedure called validation uh, to ensure that we uphold all of these across the whole range of 50 plus countries around the world. Uh, how this is in practice is um, you as a, as, as, as a country has a national governance structure. Uh, we just we you mentioned it, the, 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 EIT, the GY, EITI, uh, local multi-stakeholder group. And each year you have to publish and we check uh, from time to time, three years is the normal procedure if you have your report, your disclosure of data have covered all of these items that are codified in the standard, but also the same procedure check that the, this tripartite dynamic have functioned according to these agreed rules, which you know is open inclusive decision making, uh, use of the data, uh, inclusiveness of, of civil society in following, in asking questions, in monitoring and demanding that things are done according to the agreed term of reference for each report, according to the agreed scope for each reporting cycle, et cetera. So that's, that's the way. The way is to, to work constructively, database-driven, uh, evidence-driven in getting a much better transparent and, and accountable framework. Uh, this, is, this set is, is sometimes, obviously is, is not easy to what it means in practice. Should we um, stress this? Should I want to include that when I mentioned just now that countries can use the EITI platform for, to shed line on particular issue? Well, to agree on those particular issues sometimes have to follow negotiations and which sometimes, and healthily so, respond to tensions and different of opinion. But then the, the standard is meant to facilitate decisions going forward that address these things in a consensual manner. Thank you so much, Mr. Paris. 
Uh, speaking of data and uh, disclosing data, there is one more question regarding to this topic before we move on. For oil production data, it appears that is provided by the foreign oil companies operating in Guyana. With respect to EITI, what are the responsibilities of the government for obtaining this oil production data independently of what the oil companies provide? Excellent question, Kitty. Um, and this is one of my favorite requirements. This is a requirement 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. And uh, it's my favorite because it's one of the, the one that people uh, and countries pay less attention to or receive less um, focus when we discuss about the EITI standard. And what you just mentioned is so trivial, and but at the same time, key. Uh, we, in the standard, we demand that this data of production data is disclosed. But also, how, what is behind the production of this data? If the data is self-declared by the operators, well, you should say that. I, I, I repeat my mantra. We are not here to pass judgment on what is the best way to do it. But what we here is to ensure that it's transparently transmitted. And if, if a country read in a EITR report that this production of this commodity is X, Y unit of this X community, uh, commodity, uh, how this figure was obtained, how this figure was um, methodologically check. Uh, and that's what we, we, we require. Um, and it's very interesting because many, many countries don't, don't, don't or many processes in, in countries don't pick on, on this question, and which I think is trivial uh, um, uh, and, and, and very pertinent. So we have a, a requirement to, to disclose this. Um, we should have accompany this disclosure with an explanation of the methodology and how these figures are obtained, monitored, et cetera. Thank you so much. That's very, very helpful to know. Now, the next question is about civic involvement. What have been some of the models for community involvement in the extractive industry transparency efforts? It is important that citizens feel the real, that they will benefit from the sector. Um, I'm not sure if um, um, I, I totally understand the, the, the nuances of the question, but um, in, 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 because you mentioned the community level. The EITI uh, is established at the national level and civil society need to be represented. An ideal way to represent the, for this representation of the EITI in that tripartite table should be um, a uh, diversified set of, of interests and, and levels. So I, I always said, um, I, I, in Latin America, um, pretty much we, we've seen it, uh, civil society is, is represented through academic uh, institutions, uh, think tanks, um, activism at the national level, and more and more, and we encourage, and we know that it's sometimes a challenge, local civil society, local activism. I understand in, in Guyana, there is a representation of the Amerindian communities. In, 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 in Peru, the same. I mentioned that the EITI even get to the level of establishing five different, in five different regions, five different EIT, mini EITI MSGs at the local level. Uh, in Colombia, there is representation from a region of Antioquia, uh, local, local um, NGOs with local reach are represented. At the community level, uh, the idea is that the EITI could be uh, the EITI national provided by the national secretary, by, the, by the, all the disclosure procedure at the national level, being our, our, our um, disseminated, debated at the local level. I, I hope I, 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 I shed some light on, 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 on what I understood was the question. Thank you so much. And the next question goes somewhat back to the data and reporting. Here we go. 
the previous Guyana government had released oil production data with some good details. The current government released some production with less details. What can EITI or civic groups do? Uh, well, they to start to ask this kind of question. That's, <laughs> so that's an excellent start. At the EITI table, well, you should uh, follow the progression of how this has been disclosed under the EITI umbrella, the EITI report. And if, if has been a, a diminution of the granularity of the frequency, that's what I meant when I said that we are in the business of ensuring data is of high quality. And a data of high quality is when it's granular enough to inform uh, and to be scrutinized when it's timely enough to be uh, scrutinized and monitored in, 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 the, in the right time, which you have uh, to act on the forensic data that is five years old, it might be too late to act upon that kind of findings. But so we, EITI, we are, are at the international level, we are here to empower US stakeholder and civil society be a key one of them to uphold uh, all this quality, timeliness, granularity. And that's what I meant by a scope, by term of reference, each time a report is published, a, cycle, a reporting cycle is uh, concluded. Thank you so much. That's some great information. Now the next question, we have some comments here in the Q&A. So if you have a question behind your comment, feel free to add that in. We would love to have some conversation going. It is really, really, really great to have some questions coming from all of you in the audience. We have 50 people online right now. So I'm sure that there are some burning questions that you are wondering. And we have an excellent speaker with a wealth of knowledge and experience. So it's a really, really great time to tap into that. Now, here comes the next question, Mr. Paris. Mr. Paris, idea of tripartite corporation is quite sound. In Guyana, the opposition party with 47% of the voters are not included in the decision making about oil. Does this meet EITI standards? The EITI standard, um, as I said, provide a framework for you to decide and to answer that question. If when you crafted your governance structure for your own EITI multi-stakeholder group at the Guyana level, uh, you have decided who should be in the EITR uh, representing the government, which units, which ministry, which uh, departments, uh, com which companies or which chambers or which sector, gold, oil and gas, et cetera. Uh, in terms of civil society, obviously that is open to, uh, uh, it's, it's perhaps, in many ways, the most difficult one to get the balance. I mentioned the diversity of representation should be a good, should provide a good balance for, for, for that. In many countries, and in some countries, they have included opposition parties. They have included members of parliament, or maybe more, in a more institutional way, you could include uh, the, you know, in some, in some parliament, in some, legislative bodies, there is a commission that deals with it. There is a, or a steering committee uh, that deals with extractive issue. That can have a representation. And this is flexible, this is flexible, sorry. This is not written in stone. If you the first time around decided that the, the, the civil society component should be agree uh, with, with your rules and you have a, a procedure the first time, you, uh, when, when you started to implement the EITI in 2017, you can change it. And you can say, well, next time we want to the, this, this constituency to be, uh, to be formed or to be, or, 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 or to be represented. Uh, and, and you might include something like that. So um, it's very difficult for, a, for to have a norm, 
at the global level that said uh, religious groups are civil society or not, parliamentarians are civil society or not, um, you know, think tanks, uh, activists on the ground, um, association for the improvement of women. This is one particular example from TNT. They are all civil society. And we, we cannot prescribe who are they or who are not. We, what we are prescribing is you should have an open discussion. You should agree on, on your own norms and rules to, to, to adopt this representation. And this is only part of the story. Representation in an MSG as the standard required is not the end of the story. We require that that representation is in absolutely contact engagement with the rest of civil society. So nobody, there's nothing in the standard that precludes that once you have an MSG with a certain representation of civil society, that representation cannot go to a parliament to explain things and to get questions from the opposition party. That should be exactly what I meant by use of data, debate, discussion. That is perfectly possible now in your own, with your own procedure that you agree in 2017. And it's perfectly welcome, even, even by, by us, that this is that the debate and the and, and the discussion around EITI data, EITI reporting is not uh, kept in the in the close circle. Of, of the MSG or the MSG++ with a usual suspect. Open it, go debate, go to parliament and debate this. That will be an excellent idea to address this question in practice. Thank you so much, Mr. Paris. And the next question is back to data. I think there are a lot of questions uh, were generated by uh, your comments on reporting. So here we go. You mentioned timely data. What is the time frame recommended? Is it a month, a year? Can you be a little bit more specific, please? The EITI standard have a flexible um, maximum definition for that, which is two years old. We understand that many data, uh, that especially those that come from, um, you, know, um, you know, accounting uh, that are kept by public, organiz public uh, organism, public agency, uh, have a natural cycle of, of a year. Uh, uh, companies are, uh, you know, financial statements in the company are um, audited, usually yearly. So that's a, a little bit of uh, the common sense and the prevailing um, practice in the EITI has been that uh, many of these data, revenue, et cetera, is, should be annual. The standard gives you the maximum of two years, recognizing that sometimes it's problematic. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think we should move quickly to only limit to a year old data. But yeah, the standard as it is now, 2019, still allows for a two years um, period. But more and more, the EITI is being implemented in many countries by real data. Uh, not only that revenue part, but also, for example, uh, cadastral information. Cadastral information these days is, is in, in many countries is online. It's, it's, you know, if you uh, award uh, a new license, mining license today, it should be reflected in the cadastral um, soon, uh, perhaps online, perhaps uh, per, uh, on time, perhaps a, a week later. But um, so the nature of, of uh, if you go to the EITI Norway uh, portal, data portal, you will see the production of the oil field of, I think, a delay of hours or maybe a day or two. So you can see just today how much was produced in an in a oil field. So as, as uh, I show, the standard covers a, a large um, uh, or, or extended amount uh, of items and, and different areas, and some of them are subject to, to have information in real time. Some of them follow um, a more common sense, uh, even statutory 
uh, cycle of a year or so. Thank you, thank you so much. We have some more questions, but before we move on, I like to highlight that your opinion matters. We do wanna hear your opinion. In fact, we have a survey on transparency that is public. I put the link in the chat for you. So please go ahead and uh, after today's webinar or whenever you have some time, take a look at it and see uh, what, it, and, and just share your opinion. This whole survey is aimed to capture some of your perceptions uh, in and about transparency in the extractive sector in Guyana. And as we are getting more and more people's responses, the results are shared real time. No one or two or three year delay. <laughs> they are coming right online on the same page. So after you voted, you'll be able to see what others were thinking about the same questions. And our hope is that by Friday, we would have a really nice participation from the actors all across Guyana and all the stakeholders. And uh, you can check real time anytime that you like to where the results are standing at the moment. So that is a survey that's open for the remainder of the conference. You are welcome to participate. And here's the next question. Mr. Paris, are you ready? Very ready. All right, good. Hello, Mr. Paris. You were the first to visit Guyana on explaining EITI for us and the mining sector. Taking into consideration all we know of EITI, could you say what has been the major benefits to countries that have implemented EITI? Many. Um, first, to establish a, um, a, a table that sometimes um, in many countries was not possible before, in many of the sector, it's not happening where you, uh, the government and, and civil society and, and industry can sit uh, and see eye to eye and address this thing in, in a, with, a, with, a, with a protocol, the standard in a way, with, with, with a guidance, with, with established procedure, but also, obviously with, with the spirit of, of going forward and, and, and build this good governance together. More uh, specifically, uh, I mentioned in, 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 the, in the video, uh, the EITI platform have allowed, for example, in Nigeria, the, on, on, the uh, unveil revenues not paid by the national oil company and others uh, of the, in the region of eight, $10 billion of revenues um, not accounted for. In many others, the EITI report or the EITI validation have allowed to identify these this, um, uh, environmental regulation are not being uh, followed. These environmental funds, uh, remedial funds are not being spent. Uh, these companies are, are not paying uh, properly. Uh, this uh, revenue has not been distributed to the regions uh, according to the formula. Agree, many many uses of 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 of, of that have allowed for scrutiny for pointing at, at at difficult questions. The EITI, of course, have limitation. The EITI, a, a national platform composed of twelve people, fifteen people, as I mentioned might not have the institutional and, and judiciary uh, teeth to uh, investigate, but certainly uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a platform for, for, for dialogue and disclosure of, of, of data and, 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 and pointed out a, a, a simple question, why this is, as the question you, you mentioned today, uh, we have a little now project to, to try to, to, to provide more guidance on how production data is collected, how production data is the methodology behind this. Uh, and that was the question you, you made before. That's the kind of question that um, move uh, in real time in practice, this mantra of, of accountability and, and good governance. Uh, Sometimes those are big words. Um, and if we get up only to that level of, oh, good governance. No, good governance means 
asking sometimes simple questions. Where is, please, could you explain to me what, how do you get this production date? Ah, we have a, uh, in, in the case of oil and gas, there are some meters and this meter have this technical uh, qualities. Okay, fine. And in, in mining is when they export, this is measured at, at, at the level of the port that this is uh, um, shipped to another country or not, or different um, variation of that. Those are the questions that in practice need to be asked. These are the kind of scrutiny that need to be done to make that big, the aggregation of this small thing is what we can then confidently say being accountable and accountability leading to good governance. When, when you are accountable, you are liable or you, you, you are exposed to, to, to respond questions from a stakeholder, from the people who uh, um, are entitled to, the owners of these resources, et cetera. And, and that's the way it should happen. And it's happening every day in many of these countries, sometimes, as I mentioned, this example of Nigeria are more grandiose, and you can you can say, oh, a billion dollar were recovered. But it, it, they are going to the other stream. There are many many questions. Um, government system has been improved because of the EITI asking this question or 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 pointing out of these gaps in 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 the procedures, in the data collection, in the data disclosure, and then next next reporting cycle, this government agency have to adapt to a, a better better procedure, better disclosing, et cetera. This is happening every day. That's really, really good to know. Thank you, Mr. Paris, for sharing that. Now, we still have a couple of questions and we still have a few more minutes. So here is the next one. How effective has the EITI scrutiny mechanisms have been in other resource-rich countries? Well, uh, that is a, 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 a question that um, might not have an answer because what uh, we need to agree what, what you mean by effective, uh, what, what impact has, uh, has been achieved. Um, we have agonized uh, uh, on trying to answer, trying to provide uh, a, a, and adopt a framework that can more structurally answer that kind of question. We call it the question of impact. Uh, is all of this disclosure of data, all of this uh, scrutiny, all of this debate around data and, and all the gaps that, that are not happening. If we put all together, how, uh, how we create an impact on, on, on this sort of, uh, uh, have, have uh, resources been better distributed, have been uh, the use of, of, of those revenues have been have improved in countries, have countries in, invest and spend in, in, in the right um, items for development, in the education, in health, uh, have government get a better share of this or, 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 or is the, of this, what they call it the government take is, is not adequate compared to others. Um, we, we don't have a, 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 a single mechanism to say, okay, this is the way you're gonna measure uh, this. But we believe that um, by putting the, the, this, this data and these procedures everywhere, we have moved uh, in, the, in the right direction for, for that. Thank you, Mr. Paris. Now there is a follow-up question to this. Um, what were some of the factors responsible for EITI non-effectiveness in research-rich contexts? Not no, non-effective. Yeah, let me no. repeat that. No. What were some of the factors responsible for EITI non-effectiveness in resource-rich contexts? That's a very good one. <laughs> and we can uh, keep talking about this for one hour, at least more. Um, because it's exactly a complementary to my previous, uh, or the, your previous question that I, uh, I hope I, I, I try to address uh, with a caveat that I don't think we have um, a sole answer. Uh, what are, uh, if I interpreted this, what are the obstacles? Why are, why are, why are we are not uh, achieving 
uh, or, or the impact, the ideal, the optimum impact that we all would like to, which is, as I said, better use of these revenues, uh, public goods uh, going to benefit citizens. Um, well, the true reality is that this is very complex and the, this all this change of decisions that are related to what I call the value chains are in, in many ways very difficult to achieve uh, optimal results all the time across all the items, so, meaning that you get the better, the best contract, you get the best government take of balance between incentivizing public investment, sorry, private investment and public investment uh, and, and rewarding the government as a representative of the owner, that you um, collect revenues the best possible way, that you distribute all, to, to get it right uh, across that, um, uh, it might be countries that we think of, we always think of, obviously in my own country here where I'm seated, uh, Norway have been one of, of those that have achieved many of these items, many of these goals uh, in, in the best possible way. And we, they have, Norway, Norway have uh, probably the largest sovereign wealth fund that has been uh, uh, collected through many years of revenues coming from extractive uh, and, and, and the government invests in, in, in obviously in a, in a top quality health system, et cetera. Um, why this is not happening in many other countries? Why then even with a tool like the EITI, nobody can ensure that all of these things are gonna get uh, right all the time everywhere? Uh, well, because the real politics and, and the political economy uh, just to, to say, to say in a nice way, uh, sometimes prevents. Sometimes it's also all the capacity of government to get all of this right. To to, we, we mentioned the uh, production monitoring. If you don't have meters, if you don't have procedure, uh, I'm not going to mention the country, but it's a big country in Latin America and the Caribbean, big one, a, a, a mining power hub. Uh, I. I, I, I remember having a conversation with the Ministry of Energy and, and Mines of that country, and they uh, procedure were very nice established, laws and, and norms uh, were there, but they, they told me when I asked, okay, well, how, how do you enforce this in, in the ministry? They, uh, they admitted that they have only five mining engine or geologists, engineers, that could be um, deployed national, and this is a big country with a lot of mining operations, uh, deploy to go and check. To go and check things like, okay, this is the copper that has been exported. How is the content of this mix? Because the copper is not gonna be, it's gonna be 2% of copper in a big uh, amount of, of sand and other materials. And, and the, well, you need to, to check, you need to take sample, you need to, to conduct the, the technical procedures to do this. And if you only have five mining engineers in the countries, um, well, you, you can guess what kind of result you, you, you can achieve. And this is uh, the reality in each of these things. Uh, is our uh, the collect, revenue collection agency have the procedures? Uh, is the tax office in the country have have the procedures and the human resources to go and check if the accounts that has been submitted uh, of, of the revenue that has been, the declaration of revenue that has been submitted to pay uh, as is uh, reflected in the ITI procedure is, 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 um, is according to all uh, norms and regulation. Uh, all those problems with this capacity are a reality of our countries and certainly are the sort of obstacle that keep us apart from this big goal of transforming mining resources or mineral resources into development. Thank you so much, Mr. Paris. And we are coming up to the end of uh, this presentation today with Mr. Paris. So let's take one more question and then we are going to close out soon. Uh, the question is about leafmer movement 
and their, uh, the lack of them on the EITI. What do you think about labor movement and their involvement in EITI? Labor, meaning labor. Uh, unions and, well, unions are part of, of uh, we, we already talked about how how the civil society space is composed or in many countries. In many, there are the unions are represented. In your neighbor, Trinidad and Tobago, the oil worker uh, union is part of the EITI um, MSG and, and, and local constituency. Um, again, that, that, the, the same reflection I, I share on uh, if we should include parliamentarians or opposition parties, go for union is a, it's a very important uh, component of the social <laughs> tissue. Uh, uh, and, and very well organized in, in many countries, um, organizations. So uh, it's up to each country to, to, to include it. And, and if, 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 I mean, if they are engaged, they should have a, a seat on the table either by being representatives in, in, in the MSG, but also as part of, as I mentioned, the wider civil society space where these things are debated, discussed, scrutinized, etc. Thank you so much, Mr. Paris. This is the time we had for today. I just want to say how grateful we are for you and for EITI to provide support and be here today and share all that wealth of knowledge and experience that you brought to the table. And uh, we have a lot more in a store for our dear participants. I would like to show you our conference website and bring your attention to some of the things that are coming up today. So our website is uh, available in the, I'll put that in the chat for you for quick access as well. And what we, else we have today in store is some panel discussions. Right after lunch at one o'clock, we will be back with civil society presentation, experiences and lessons learned in governance, communications, and environmental justice. Please join that panel discussion at one o'clock Guyana time. And then later in the afternoon, we have uh, Guyana's National Governance and Transparency Policies panel that starts at 2.30. And then at four o'clock, you're gonna hear some, uh, some information from Trinidad and Tobago using EITI data to inform public policy and dialogue. So all your questions about data, that can be very well channeled into that discussion and see how another country uh, has worked with data that's been available through EITI. Now, at the end of the day, the last panel discussion we have is at five o'clock Guyana time on competing interests in the extractive sector and how to reduce risk and conflict and reap benefits. So we have some very lively conversations for on all of these panels and presentations. And to finish up the day uh, with, in some good mood and with some sportsmanship and networking, we have a cocktail hour, which is a very informal gathering. Since we are not able to gather in person, we would like to open a forum for you virtually to connect with one another. That starts at 6.30 p.m. this afternoon. And we would love for you to join us. Uh, please take a look at the chat and see some important links there. Uh, we would love to see your feedback on today's presentation. And all information about the conference is available on the GITI Transparency Weeks website. And we'll see you at one o'clock with the civil society presentation. Thank you so much for joining. Enjoy your lunch time, and we will see you very soon. Mr. Paris, it's been a pleasure to have you as a conversation partner and take all of the questions that the audience had, have for, had for you. And I wish you a great evening in Oslo, and hopefully we get to see you throughout the conference on some other days as well. Thank you very much. I, I, I agree with you. It looks a fantastic uh, program. Uh, uh, please take advantage of your neighbor, uh, TNT. They are 
uh, uh, a key uh, implementer in the region. And I'm very sorry that um, your, co your virtual cocktail is, is past my bedtime. <laughs> um, but uh, I will be with you in the spirit. But good luck with everything. This week, um, we are contributing tomorrow with um, my, my colleague Fatma is going to present on oil sales. Um, and we will try to join as many sessions as possible. We also have our international board this week. So that my conflict with, with our capacity to join. But again, thank you very much, all of you. And I wish you the best. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.